Welcome back to another look at the EX series in Pokemon. And today we are going to be looking at the 16th set in the English language, which was the first EX set, EX Ruby and Sapphire. But before we start looking at it, I need to look back at the context of where Pokemon was, uh, how it had got to this point, and what this set really meant. So if we think back to 1998, when um, we most of the people who got into Pokemon back in those days started with base set and Gen 1 and Red and Blue, um, we had 151 Pokemon set in Kanto, and that's the bedrock of Pokemon. And then in 2000, we'd had the expansion on that, which was the Johto Pokemon, another 100 Pokemon added. And uh, Johto was connected to Kanto, so there was that lovely feeling of new Pokemon, new forms, and then returning to our original playground of Kanto. Um, and that felt really good. And throughout that period, Wizards of the Coast had had the license to produce Pokemon cards. Um, but with Sky Ridge in May of 2003, which is this one here, um, was the final Wizards of the Coast uh, set. They lost the license to print Pokemon cards after that, and Nintendo took over producing Pokemon cards. So, as I say, Skyridge had come out in May of 2003. Bye-bye, Skyridge. A month later, one month, Nintendo brought out Ruby and Sapphire. Um, it's very difficult to get across how that felt, how... Um, it, it was a time of real change because Hoenn wasn't in any way connected to Kanto and Johto, or not, not in the game, as it were. Um, it was like a reset of the whole thing. You, there were, when you, if you play Ruby and Sapphire, it's not old Pokemon that you're encountering. It's this whole world of new Pokemon, the new kids on the block. And, uh, it just... This really felt like such a dramatic change. Uh, we'd only had one month to try and complete Sky Ridge before we had a new set. Possibly why Sky Ridge didn't sell particularly well. Um, and uh, it felt really weird. Packs of cards were suddenly nine cards in a pack. The quality of the cards didn't feel as good. Uh, Wizards of the Coast cards feel slightly denser, better printed. This felt a little bit cheap. Um, and it just it, it was just disconcerting to suddenly have this whole new set of Pokemon. So as I say, this set came out in June of 2003. In Europe, where I'm living, um, we didn't actually get the games Ruby and Sapphire for another month or so. So we got all these characters in cards before we actually got to see them in the game. Um, my thoughts on the set generally are that it's not a particularly strong set. It's a it's a baseline set. It's 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 the standards for Gen three. Uh, a lot. Of, I mean, they're all rookie cards, really, uh, of the first time that these Pokemon have appeared on a card. Um, there are 10 Arita cards in here from, from my personal collection of Arita. Um, but there's not a lot of exciting cards that, or memorable cards. There's quite a lot of stock art Sugimori, etc. Um, the other thing I wanted to look at was... Let's take desk stocks out. <laughs> so... Um, oh, I'll show you... That's the reverse foils for the set, which were the... Mirror foils that they were using at the time. They'd done the same with Skyridge, I think. Yes. Um, so very, very plain. There's no, nothing on the the bottom thick border. Looks a bit weird. Uh, makes it look off century. Um, but importantly, Japan. Japan had ditched the yellow borders. We still haven't, unfortunately, but they ditched them in 2003. Um, so aesthetically, 
there's quite a big difference between how the cards look in Japanese and in English. So we'll have a little look through this binder. Um, as I say, these are rookie cards. The, uh, these characters had not been represented before this set. And we've got the new starters with Blaziken Septile. Uh, there are 14 hollows. Um, this is Arita Swampert. And the big boy, Waylord. But that's just a Sugimori stock art. And uh, there's a nice Koki Saito. I'm not going to get it. I'm going to get very few cards out because they really aren't. They don't need to be. There's no, there's no really bad cards in here. They're just, they're, they're just okay. And as you will see, there's a lot of repeating going on. So we've got two Groval, two Gumbaskin, two Curlier. Uh, there are three of a lot of things. So we've got an Aron. I think there are two more Arons later on. Um, yeah, there they are. Two more Arons. There's the beautiful Arita one. Um, to Marsh Tomps, amazing, Arita Welma. Uh, what can I say about this set? It's not very exciting. I don't like the design. I mean, look, here's, here's an example. Let's put them all together. You see, it's three Makuhita. Do we really need three? I suppose they're doing the moves are different on the card. You might want to build a deck with variation in what they can do, but they weren't any of them very exciting. But that's okay. I don't mind them producing three Makuhitas or anything like that. Amazing card there. And the start of Electrikes. There are so many Electrikes printed in TCG. So, Pucciana, 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 Routes, 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 Skitty, Skitty, Torchic, Torchic, it just repeats. Very, very boring trainer cards. Really, no thought put into them. Um, got some rare energies still, they were still doing that thing with rare energies. And then we've got these things, and they are, I mean, I hate them. I really, these are the worst EXs. I, I don't like EXs generally, but the, these are particularly ugly looking in my opinion. And it, um, they were the chase cards. You would get about four or five to a box, I think. So they weren't that difficult to pull. Um, but Sky Ridge, which had come out, as I say, a month earlier, had the crystals as the big chase cards, the rare ones. And those were gorgeous and quite hard to pull and came with reverses as well. These didn't come with reverses. Um, I think this is the most sought after and valuable, but let's have a look at it. So it's just... I think if they put those little sort of thingy bobs that they... But I suppose they couldn't because it's not yellow. Um, <laughs> CGI stuff. It's just not not attractive. It's I really can't find any enthusiasm for those for those cards. And they were the chase cards, so it, the, the set kind of fell flat for me because these were the hard to find cards, and they, you didn't really feel you wanted them in a way. I mean, that magma is just ghastly. Let's have a look at it. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to be nasty to Hikaru Koiki. Um, but it's really not, not a nice card. I mean, the Lapras is sort of interesting with the dark on it, but all bubbly in the background, but it's fairly repulsive. <laughs> um, so what else is there to say? Oh yeah, there were energy cards 
the individual set with the little E, they're quite nice to have. Um, oh, these are the promos that... Um, let's have a look at these. These are the legendaries that... But they, they came out as promos around the same time, I think about a month later. Um, there's Kyoga and there's Grodon. So, I don't like the Grodon, but I think the Kyoga is quite nice. But it, it's, it's a CGI thing. So, there we go. That is a look at where the EX series started. It didn't start off very powerfully. And this set is moderately forgettable, I guess. Um, anyway, hope somebody found that interesting.